Hi everyone, welcome back to Questions on the Parsha. This week's Parsha is Parshat Vayechi, and I want to start with a question about a word. It's a word that we use all the time, and that word is bracha. There's a few places in bracha in our Parsha. Yaakov blesses the sons of Yosef, and then he blesses all 12 of his own sons through the end of the Parsha. And my question is very simple. What does the word bracha mean? Now, when you're looking for an answer, it's always good to check the home base, the first appearance. The first appearance of the word bracha is in the fifth day of the story of creation, when God blesses the fishes. Then he blesses man on the sixth day, and then he blesses Shabbos on the seventh. You can also think about why it is that man eats fish on Shabbat, but that's for another time. A few more tips of where to look is there's a couple of core meanings to the word bracha. One is from berech, the knees, which has to do with why we bow and open up space. Another one is brecha, which is a pool that you draw water from the source. Right? And the last to give you to think about is havracha, grafting, when we put two living things together in order that they can grow as one. Okay, second question. The question is, why does the firstborn never inherit? I challenge you to find me a firstborn of any significance in the Tanakh who inherits his father's position. In our parsha, it's particularly noticeable when Yaakov, sikelet yadav, he switched his hands to give the blessings to Ephraim and Menashe. Even though Menashe was the firstborn, as Yosef points out to him, he gives his blessing of the firstborn to Ephraim. Now this is consistent. Yitzchak over Yishmael, Yaakov over Esav. And if you go back and look at the story of Peretz and Zerach in the 39th chapter of Breshit, lines 28 to 30, you'll see a very amazing story about Peretz, who's actually born first, but is not the firstborn, because his brother Zerach stuck his hand out and the midwife tied a red string around it to know who indeed emerged first. Now don't forget, from Peretz comes the line of King David, and ultimately of Mashiach. So it's a question, why does the firstborn never inherit? All right, last question. This is another question about a word, another very important word, and that word is tefillah. Now, the first usage of the word tefillah is in Breshit 20, line 7. Go look for it there. And notice, by the way, it also shows up next to the first usage of the word navi, prophet. Another place to look that's closer to our parsha is a very interesting Rashi on the name Naphtali. Right? That's in Breshit 30, Line 8. You should compare also to Yaakov's blessing in our parsha in 49.21, especially the Unclus on what he says when he calls Naphtali Imre Shefer. But how do we get there in our parsha? Well, it's very simple. In chapter 48, line 11, at the end of his life, Yaakov and Yosef are reviewing what's happened. And he says to Yaakov, I never dreamed I would see your face, and here I see your children. Ro'o penecha lo filavti. Lo filalti. What does filalti mean? Rashi says, Lo mil'ani libi lachshov. My heart didn't have the courage to think that I would see you. So this is the first usage of pei lamed lamed, which may be the root of tefillah, that is not directly related to actually the act of praying. So go look and find and discover what is the meaning of the word tefillah. That's it for this week. More questions to come. Shabbat shalom.